the old studio. Just, I'll show you this right. World's oldest lunar calendar discovered in Scotland predates time measuring devices found in Near East by nearly 5,000 years. considered to be the world's oldest calendar was found in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. It was created around 8,000 sorry. BC and predates the first normal time, sorry, the first formal time measuring devices found in the Near East by nearly 5,000 years. 5,000 years? Found in Aberdeenshire. And then before. I'll just show you that, eh? One field, they found the world's these pits and it's a lunar calendar. It's considered the oldest calendar found. Um, yeah, uh, watching Flat Earth British last night. Yeah, I was watching Flat Earth British last night. Oh my god, look at the dogs. Look at my dog in the middle. Well, they my two dogs sat out, the one led down was the brother. But look at my dog in the... My stepdaughter put that on Facebook as well. <laughs> look, she do, she switched photos though. Anyway, uh, um... <laughs> uh, I read this last night, right? So they came to Manchester, yeah, and some of them got left behind. There's a better article than the one I'm showing here, right? I'll, I'll try and find it, and then I'll come back to it. Because some of them got left behind. And, well, you see. Yeah, I think it's a better article, right? Um, so it says... Steve, Councillor Stephen Cohen has investigated the story and many other enigmas surrounding the Sioux Indian six months stay in Salford. He's unearthed. Interesting facts Councillor Cohen has unearthed include the fact that many of the Sioux were veterans of the iconic American battle Little Big Horn and they were on the run in Europe from the US cavalry. One small Sioux girl was baptised in St. Clement's Church before slipping out the history books and descendants of the Salford settlers still live in Greater Manchester, mentally. Eh? When I first got told that years ago, I thought it was rubbish. And then um, I was into Happy Mondays, and one of those, one of the members of the Happy Mondays was obsessed with these, the Salford Sioux as well, I found out later. So it, that's when I thought, it really is a thing then. And then, of course, when I got internet later and all that, I looked into it more. But look, these are the ones we got 
left behind and I had to make the wrong way back. Spiritual leader, um, Black Elk, spiritual leader of the Lakota Sioux Indian tribe, wrote of his stain Salford in his book, Black Elk Speaks. I'm gonna try and find that. Surrounded by the enemy, a six foot seven warrior. He died of a lung infection, aged only 22 during the tribe, stain Salford. He was the only member of the tribe to die while they were here. And his official records can still be traced today. After he died in his teepee in Salford Keys, his body was taken to Hope Hospital. According to Brompton Cemetery London records, he was buried on 15th of December 1887 next to his fellow Lakota warrior Paul Eagle Star. Why did it say earlier he was the only member of the tribe to die while they were here? And then it says he was buried next to his fellow Lakota warrior Paul Eagle Star. I don't get that. Francis Victoria Alexander, the only Sioux to be born in Salford during the store stay. She was baptised in February 1888 in Sacred Trinity Church where registers record her as being daughter of Little Chief and Good Rob. Uh, and Charging Thunder, one of the first Pony Express riders in America, Charging Thunder was a member of the Blackfoot tribe. He came to Salford age 26 during the Souls 1903 tour and stayed on, so they, they came back then. He was believed to have been the only Native American living in the Northwest until his death age 52 in 1929. With him were Josephine, a short shooting cowgirl with the circus, and their daughter Bessie. The family stayed in the area after Bessie caught diphtheria. He changed his name to George Edward Williams and moved to George Street in Gorton, Manchester. Rita and her brother Gary are charging Thunder's grandchildren. He died before she was born, but her Aunt Bessie told the stories about the Lakota's visit to Salford. Among items in her dressing box as a child were charging Thunder's war bonnet, a bow and arrows, and tomahawk. The mum Gladys was charging Thunder's daughter. So... It was true what I got told years ago. Just made me think about it last night. We, um, I might be sure I did the Wild West, was it as we were told and stuff? And some images there. I found out that there's a play, Salford Sioux, revealed a new play, tracking the Salford Sioux. Could the burial ground of Sioux Warrior being found? And the Salford Keys, one of the trailers, who was surrounded by the enemy, died from a chest infection. These keys at six foot seven inches, the imposing sight of the Sioux Warrior on the battlefield would have been enough to install the enemy with fear. The towering warrior with solemn name surrounded by the enemy was a source of fascination and mystery. Surrounded, as he was better known, succumbed to a chest infection in his TP on the Chili Sulphur Keys in 1887 and died. His body was taken to a hospital where it promptly vanished. There was no official burial. There was... This is weird, eh? What's going on here? Hey. Eh? Surrounded by the enemy. He was buried on 15th of December 1887 next to his fellow Lakota warrior, Paul Eaglesloy, but it says he was the only one to die. Then he said he was buried next to his fucking fellow tribe member. There's something going on here, isn't there? And do you know what? What's weird, right? It's saying his body vanished. I've only just read that now, yeah? When I've lined this up, when I'm looking at them. You see me then looking at your photos? Right, but... Oh, my... I'll show you what I'm on about. Because I, I tried making this vlog before, right? And I kept fucking it up, but I'll show you some of what I made earlier. Last night, when I was a bit tired. Recreated classic gunslinging scenes from the Wild West with their cowboy counterparts. Italics. The show was so popular in Salford that it took a break from its world so Sorry, just history books. And <coughs> no, they got a lung infection, place fucking damn cold. Right, here I am talking about surrounded by the enemy here, right? The six foot seven warrior who died of a lung infection, age twenty two. It's saying here that he was buried next to his fellow Lakota warrior, Paul Eagle Star. But it says in the sentence before that that he was the only member to die of the tribe to die whilst they were here. 
And this is when I first read that last night. Listen to what I said. Fucking <coughs> foggy to her. Always raining. Maybe it's not snowing. On 22 during the tribe stay in Salford. He was the only member of the tribe to die while, the, while they were here. This is weird. Could have been worse. And his official records can still be traced today. After he died in his TP on Salford Key, his body was taken to Hope Hospital. According to Brompton Cemetery, I don't know what's coming here. According to Brompton Cemetery records, he was buried on 15th of December 1887 next to his fellow Lakota warrior, Paul Eagle Star. I don't know what, what I'm basing this on, mate, but I've got a feeling they kept his body at that hospital and examined it because it was um, exotic to the third eyes in that back in the day. If, we, if it's true what they tell us. Did you hear that? I said last night when I read that that they took his body to Hope Hospital in London and I said I don't think he's made it because he was exotic he was 6 foot 7 inch warrior it's like the equivalent of us having an alien today in this country they didn't get any 6 foot 7 Native Americans they didn't get any Native Americans with a 6 foot 7 one it had been like I said exotic to them and they couldn't have resisted chopping that up and finding whatever they can about that body right but I, I was under the impression that they'd, the official story where they buried him that's where I were last night, but I, it didn't ring through. I thought they never buried, they kept that body. And then I just read that article, what I showed you then. This is 2007. Surrounded by the enemy, was a sort. Surrounded as he better known, succumbed to a chest infection. His body was taken to Hope Hospital, where it promptly vanished. There was no official burial record. There is no record of it being moved, and nobody admitted to taking it. Now, 120 years later, the mystery may be solved with a start of excavations on that site. Experts hope might just uncover the once impressive warrior's final resting place. The greatest show on earth as Buffalo Bills Wild West and Congress of Rough Riders of the World Show to give it its full name set up camp. Hey. He was the only member of the tribe to die while they were in Salford and his official records can still be traced today but his body was never recovered or recorded in a church burial and it is rumoured that it could still be somewhere in the Salford Key area. No, they kept his body, didn't they, at that Hope Hospital. I'm getting really conflicting accounts here. Sue Indian came to Salford, Sydney in Manchester in 1903 when he was part of Buffalo Bills. See, that's another conflict. I've been told it was 1887, 1888. This is just confusing. Oh, the show returned to Salford in 1903, bringing with them charging Thunder and Josephine. I'll leave your links anyway to all these, right? This is something else I've been working on. Well, not working on, but I was watching Black Sheep Researcher last night. And, um, see, here, this Black Madonna here, right? Sorry. Hey, this Black Madonna here, everywhere I, I see Jesuits or um, possible Phoenician links. There's always black Madonnas, black Madonnas. And it's when it shows the mother Mary with Jesus as babies. Look at Fleur de Lis all over the top. What the clothes she's wearing there? Is that a Fleur de Lis? It is. It looks like Vagras. 
Look at the Vagras. Like Fleur de Lis, but Vagras. Oh, man. Yeah. The point is, anyway, Our Lady, Star of the Sea, is an ancient title for the Virgin Mary. The words Star of the Sea are a translation of the Latin title Stella Maris. Because um, the Black Sheep Warrior found out that where Sun's located, its um, name is means that it's, it means Star of the Sea. I can't remember the Swiss version of it, but it means Virgin Mary, which is Star of the Sea, Our Lady Star of the Sea. The Roman Catholic Church honours Our Lady Star of the Sea with a feast day assigned to September 27th. Seafarers, the Apostles of the Sea, often known locally as Stella Maris, whom seafarers recognise for providing pastoral, practical and spiritual support. The Apostle of the Sea, caring for seafarers is a profoundly Christian thing to do. Stella Maris Lighthouse on the Uruguay River, Our Lady of the Sea, Golden Sea, it's just... A 19th century of murder, start of the sea. I just thought that was interesting, especially for you, Febs, with the work that Febs has so brilliantly done on Phoenicians. And how they're, um... The seafaring power, and the sea's everything to them. But I just thought that was really curious. I'm a bit higgledy piggledy. I've rushed this vlog and because I'm busy, I've got a lot of things to do today, so just rushed that out. Uh, Lee, I'm glad you got your card. Uh, enjoy your right, bro. I've not had a smoke for two days. Hopefully, I'm getting some now. That's why I'm rushing this because I'm away to get some. <laughs> hey, take care, y'all. See you later. Sorry, this is a bit higgledy piggledy, but hopefully, you get the gist of what I'm saying here. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Bye, y'all.